Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Banded the Encore. I'm your host, Ashley Live. On tonight's show, we have mentor Dave Bahanish and his band, Honeysuckle Rose. It was awesome hearing their power ballad shine. So let's welcome Honeysuckle Rose. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks Thank for having so us, much. Ashley. It's yes, a pleasure. How, are you guys, how are you guys doing this evening? Very doing good. Great. 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 We're doing great. I have been waiting awesome. for this for a long time, I guess. So, Chris, let's start with you. Can you share the story behind the creation of the song Shine and how it was working with your mentor, Dave? Uh, I think uh, this this song that we we wanted to power ballad that had like a very catchy melody. That was the biggest thing, you know. We didn't really want all the gimmicks mm -hmm. that uh, the stage props and stuff. We just want to make a really good song that had a good meaning behind it. And uh, yeah. this song's about, you know, being so in love with someone that you just want to celebrate them and like have uplifting, you know, like you want to bring them up and just help them shine and be the best they can be. And I think uh, as, as a duo, you know, we, we want to utilize the, you know, the, the, the male and the female as they were in love and singing a song to each other about how they wanted to bring each other up and, and uh, be the, be the best they could be in a relationship and everything, you know? So that's where we got that. Mm -hmm. And how was it working with Dave? Dave is, uh, he's an interesting individual. He's, I love Dave so much. If, if you've ever been to a studio, it can kind of just paint a picture of how Dave is. Cause like, it's, it's like the inside of his head. It's like, he's so creative and he's just, he's just yeah. constantly got these ideas that are just popping up and they're so brilliant. And it's just like, he's, he's different than anybody you've ever met. And, uh, and writing with him was just, it was stellar. Cause like, he just had so many different ideas and it was, it's so different from and diverse from anyone else that I've ever written with. So uh, I love, I love mm -hmm. Dave. I think we all, all do. So Leo, can you share the story about the creation of the song Shine? I think it came down. It was kind of easy. I think if I remember well, um, you know, the harmony kind of goes into this Spanish kind of vibes and, 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 and all of that love environment of just it, it just happened quick i think and david as he said david's so easy to work with that that i i don't remember having having any trouble coming up with any part of it you know the the the, the breakdowns how it starts oh hey i thought about this baseline i told him and he's like yeah go ahead go for it i think that's what he needs oh santiago go 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 big chords and what do you think oh yes that you know it, it, it was really intuitive I think at that po at that point it was really intuitive, different than the first ones. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys feel like, and anybody can can answer this question, but do you guys feel like this song came together a little bit quicker than some of the other ones you worked on? I feel like they all came together really quickly. I think uh, it's the, the chemistry we had, even being as, as different as we are, was insane. Like we just, yeah. it just all fell into place. Like every song just did. So, Santiago. The judges mentioned that you guys are getting better as a band each week. Can you share some of the ways you guys bonded? Yeah, okay, 100%. So, uh, you know, there's one thing that one of the judges said to me. I think it was during the first performance, and it kind of just stuck with me. And I use it as inspiration almost on a daily basis at this point. They said uh, I needed to work on my craft. And when they said that, I didn't even take it as, like, an offensive thing. I was more just open to listening to what these professionals had to say to me and uh, what they had to offer. So I kind of took what they told me, tried to implement it into everything I was doing for the rest of the episodes and just any song that we worked on, um, especially with the performance aspect of it. Because one thing is being able to write and play music. The other is having to perform it. And a lot of people don't know this on the show, but that was actually my first time ever being on a stage, ever performing in front of anybody. So um, I kind of just took and soaked in everything that I could and just tried to implement it into my playing, into my performance, and just used it to level up. And it, if you watch and you compare the episodes, you'll be able to see in the first episode or so, I was more like in the background and kind of not really... Uh, I was a bit camera shy almost, but as the episodes progressed, I managed to kind of build more of a personality for myself on stage. Yeah. 
And that's so powerful, right? Because you went from not knowing these people to living in a house with them. Yeah. And then bonding as a band. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that was just, uh, that was one of the beautiful things about this show. We, uh, it wasn't just like, hey, we're a bunch of musicians. We make music together. We actually almost had this like family experience with each other where, uh, you know, it got to the point where we could tell if something was wrong with someone just by the tone of voice, um, the way that their body language was. And, you know, it was it was a beautiful thing because we got to know each other and we got to work around what we needed individually. You get to know people really well if you get have to go into rooms in the morning and say, Santiago, why are you not awake yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Add Leo as my alarm clock. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> How about with you, Joey? What are some ways that you guys bonded by living in the house together? I mean, just everything, you know, like there was, there's so many different things that were happening in the house that don't even happen as like a normal band, you know, like we were able to cook together. Like we had food fights at one point, you know, like, but it it was it was crazy to to grow and see each other as a band like i was able to see chris for example like one time upstairs playing a blink 182 song and i thought he was a complete country artist and it, it kind of blew my mind one time so i went upstairs and i was i didn't even know it was him playing and you know we just it was a little bonnie experience you know i got to see that side of him and it, it, it opened another like little door another connection that a little bonnie experience and you know that happened throughout the it happened throughout the show and even without that like just grooving and just playing with people like just random stuff it was it was crazy like everyone in that house was super talented especially the people in this band and it, it was wild it was really really wild i also remember one time with leo at the campfire he, he had pulled out an acoustic guitar bro like that song just stays in my head like i just remember it because of how like it sounded i've never heard it since that day but I could still remember how it sounds like everyone was just super talented over there and unique. So it was, it was a cool experience. So Leo, this song that you were playing by the campfire, are you going to record it? Are you going to do a video about it? Talk to us about that. The, specific oh, song. it's, it's a little folk, folk kind of thing on, a, on, a, on the acoustic guitar, which is my main instrument uh, before the, ba the, the bass. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing with different tunings and came up with that pulled up in the campfire and, and Joey has a video of that. You just said Joey can't post it. I do have a video. You shared somewhere. with me, but I don't know where he went. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. Somewhere on my phone. I should record. It's a good song. It's instrumental. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like because Joey already was talking about it, Leo, like it needs to see the light of day. Everybody now we're going to have to do it. it. Now, now you put me on the spotlight. Play yeah. some acoustic guitar. <laughs> So, Chris, how did you connect with the lyrics of Shine? I think, uh, I think when you know when you write a song, the best songs are songs that anybody can relate to for any reason, and then you don't want to make it about specifically one thing because then you kind of you kind of narrow down to that one group of people. So, I think when you're singing a song, for me personally, like I gotta kind of feel it somehow for me to really like mm -hmm. you know make it seem genuine and. I think me and Allie kind of on this song, you know, it, it, we knew that we, we both knew that we were trying to showcase our talents. And so we kind of, we kind of both wanted to see each other shine in this. So I feel like that's, that's kind of like, for me, that's what I, I was singing to that. I was thinking like, I just want to see you shine and like, you know, vocally. And I think she was thinking the same thing. That's how it was for me anyways. And I felt the song, it felt real. It felt, you know, powerful. Yeah, and I think as a vocalist, when you connect more with the lyrics, the audience can yeah. feel how genuine it. Because you want to transfer so your feelings to the crowd, that your emotion that you're feeling, it, it's easier to transfer that when you're when you're, you know, you're showing that and you're feeling it. So Santiago, can you talk about the dynamics within the group and how you guys create or how you guys navigate creative differences? So. You know, for me, it was uh, it was really interesting um, that day when they told us which bands we were going to be in and who was going to be in our bands and everything. Because I come from, a, 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 you know, like my musical background is a bit different than what I was playing on the show. Um, basically, I, uh, I play a lot of heavy metal stuff, you know. I play um, 
basically what the South Florida scene kind of provides with that kind of music, which is more like the deathcore genre and stuff like that. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it was actually a really eye-opening experience for me because as I was writing music with Honeysuckle Rose, I kind of realized that I genuinely don't really enjoy writing heavier music. I like to play it. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's fun to practice too. But when it comes to writing that stuff, it's just, uh, it's not something that I typically enjoy. Um, I like the music that we've been writing with Honeysuckle Rose because we kind of, uh, it was more of like a family experience. Like I said, like we came together with all these brilliant ideas and we had such a great songwriter. Dave really, uh, really helped out with that. And he kind of helped me realize with when it comes to songwriting, you don't have to overcomplicate everything. Sometimes less is more depending on how you arrange it. And that was one of the beautiful things that he taught me. Um, and I still use that to this day. Like when I'm writing songs, uh, most, most, most of the time I'm writing more indie style music, a bit of like hard rock. And I've just kind of come to the realization that I don't have to have a bunch of different parts playing at once. I don't have to make all these kind of decisions on what I want to do. It's more about getting that idea out, having that idea, working around it, and just kind of uh, simplifying it for for an audience, you know. But it's been a it's been a great experience, especially with the creative differences that we had. And like Chris mentioned, he came from a he was a rocker before, so it was nice finding that out about him, and then kind of realizing, oh, this guy's on the same page, and it is possible to change how you write your music, and what you do with it. So to be honest, I, it was just one of those things that at first I was like, this is going to be rocky, but you know, I, I worked around it, got to know everybody, and I actually had one of the best times of my life doing it. Uh, Joey, how about with you? Talk about the creative differences that you noticed on your end. Uh, it, was, it was definitely interesting. I play a lot of like punk rock, pop punk genre of music. So, I mean, there is that in the country. Like, it, it is very, like, basic rock-based. But it was more the fact of just letting go of everything. Like, I just had to – and I knew that coming into this. I was like – I feel like I almost jinxed myself. I was like, ooh, watch me get into a country band. Like, I was like, just – like, nothing no. against country. <laughs> nothing against country. But I was just – I was putting it against myself, and, and it happened. And so I, I kind of just mentally prepared myself to be ready to just you know hold the beat down and just you know get into it you gotta kind of just fall in love with the metronome and just just pretend like it's not even there at some points and just fall into the music and then mm -hmm. that's it you just, it, it was it was definitely really interesting it was really interesting i wasn't i wasn't ready for it but it i was glad that it had to happen you know we we yeah. if i can say something um it was tough at first it was. It was definitely tough, um, and, and but I think the will for everybody to, to first of all try to win a competition. Second, second, I guess just to be nice to each one, to get to learn each one, to be really a human being about what was happening, and understand that you're in a competition. And we did not chose the bands, you know. I, I think I, I end up in the right place. I'm not gonna lie, but. But it was tough. It wasn't something that just happened like on the on the movies, you know. It, it was tough. There was conversations all the time in, in the middle of, of songs like, oh, man, what, what about this? Or what about that? But I think that because we're great people, we're, these guys are great people to work with. Both, not only Dave. Dave is not only the, the great people to, to work with. Chris is. Santi is. Joey is. And I hope I am. I hope they think the same. Uh, yeah. We made it happen. We definitely made it happen, you know, and, and I think you can see on when you're watching and I think you will see when when the songs are out on Spotify and things like that. I think it's notable. Definitely. So, Chris, with the rock background and then getting into country music, talk to us about that. Um, you know, you know, I think uh, I was, you know, I was obviously in a rock band for over 10 years. And, uh, you know, I think when the pandemic happened, it's when I decided to leave the rock scene and come to Nashville. And I was mainly trying to pursue to be a songwriter and, you know, see, see what happened. And, it, you know, I started being more performer. Then I realized that I, you know, 
the country music is basically rock music. Kind of like Joe was saying, it's all got a rock foundation now, especially yeah. nowadays. Like most of the country stuff you hear on the radio, like Co Wetzel and uh, all of it's uh, hardy. It's like it's like metal, you know. What I mean, basically borderline, you know. Like so, I think uh, I think we all kind of want to have this kind of rock edge to it, the band, you know. And I think we're all on the same page where that goes. So. I like uh, I like how we're kind of having this country band with a rock rock edge, and I think uh, if we had more time together and we would put an album out, I think it would definitely be more rock rock induced, and uh, you know I think it'd be way better. I agree. Yeah, rock rock with elements. Of oh country. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, I really want you guys to put an album out. I think that would be so amazing so we can hear you guys do all this incredible music. Absolutely. We definitely have an original sound to us. Definitely. Yeah. So, guys, that's all the time that we have this evening. But I just want to say thank you so much for talking more about Banded with us. We're excited to see your journey on the rest of the show. And have a great night. Thank you. Thank you so much for having have us. Have a great one. Thank you. Ashley Live, and thanks for hanging out with us tonight. My next guest is Dave Fahanish. Dave is a singer-songwriter who co-wrote chart-topping Billboard country hits Do You Believe Me Now by Jimmy Wayne, American Ride by Toby Keith, and Without You by Keith Urban. Dave has also written songs for country superstars Tim McGraw and Colin Ray. Hi, Dave. How's it going? It's going great. It's good to be here. So happy to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what inspired you to pursue a career as a singer-songwriter? Uh, I guess I started, I was drawn to guitar when I was 10 years old. So at that point, once I picked up an electric guitar, I, I kind of had a feeling of what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I just didn't exactly know how to, to pursue it. So I in and out of bands for a while, and I but I wrote my first song when I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. and at that point it was like floodgates opened up, and I just really figured out what I was good at and what I was meant to do and what I really enjoyed doing, which is writing songs. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And was there something about writing songs that drew you to the profession? Um. Well, it took me years, like. Uh, I spent about 15 years just pursuing the artistries, putting out records before I actually moved to Nashville with the idea of being a professional songwriter. Mm -hmm. And uh, that always just, I never even knew that existed. I was, uh, I was more like the wandering troubadour, Bob Dylan type, you know, me and my guitar and singing songs from the heart, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. coffee shops, bar rooms, wherever. And then that I, I met a uh, a lady that managed a songwriter down in Nashville, and she mm -hmm. told me that I ought to go down to Nashville and sell my songs. And I moved down here 17 years ago, and uh, after about a year and a half, I had my first number one hit. So it took off. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And 17 years later, you're still in Nashville. Yeah, oh, I love it. It's the longest I've lived anywhere. You know, Nashville's great. What do you enjoy most about living in Nashville? Uh, I guess it's the same now as when I first moved to town. What I um, really enjoyed was just being amongst uh, other people that were very similar to myself, just uh, uh, creatively inclined, all about uh, music or performance or whatever. It's uh, 
I relate to those people, you know, because I, I lived it for so long that a lot of my friends are half my age and they're all up and coming songwriters and performing artists. So I always feel right at home. Mm -hmm. And you're with a bunch of people who are creative musicians, singer songwriters, and the vibe's oh, yeah. got to be amazing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Every day there's there's someone coming and going and, you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. What was it like collaborating with Honeysuckle Rose and how did their unique sound and style influence the creative process? Well, immediately we knew that it was going to be challenging because uh, Joey, of course, uh, everybody was prone towards certain musical styles. Santiago loves, uh, uh, you know, wailing on electric guitar and uh, really, really fast leads and everything. And Joey's kind of a, a banger. Uh, drummer, but at the same time, he ended up being a very solid drummer on just about every genre. And we had a soulful singer uh, out of Alley, and then Chris, of course, kind of country, kind of rock. And Leo, the uh, bass player, was willing to just do whatever it takes. Big team player, very talented in music. And uh, so immediately we thought we're going to have to find a way to, to pull all of our styles together in something that everybody's happy and passionate about playing, but also, you know, maybe speaks uh, uh, universally, something accessible. And right off the bat, I think that uh, that's what we were going for. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are all these different kinds of musicians with different backgrounds, and then they're thrown into this band and they say, hey, now you need to start writing songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, luckily, all, all of them, uh, for the most part, no stranger to songwriting. They'd, they'd all had written a lot before, especially, uh, I know Chris has said that, and Allie had said that, and, mm -hmm. and the other guys are, were part of bands already that had been uh, writing for a while. So it wasn't too difficult. Getting everybody on the same page was probably the biggest challenge, like, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you talk to us more about the challenges creatively that you guys faced? Uh, well, that was that was really a, about it. Trying to suit you know, I you're you're a guitar player, and it's, it's like you want your style to show. You you want yourself to throw show through your instruments. Same with drums, and the mm -hmm. singers especially. And it's it's more than just the notes they're singing. The words they have to connect with the words. So. The challenging thing was we would find something that we would be going with and uh, one of them would really like it because it, it really appealed to them and their style, but then it, it kind of neglected one of the other players. So we, yeah. we'd, we'd go forward a couple steps and then pull it back. and then. But the, in, in that process, I think we really ended up with some songs that, in my opinion, are just dynamite. Yeah, I, I love the songs that you guys have been performing. They're so amazing. Yeah, and they, uh, they progressively, I, I know you haven't been through the whole thing. As I remember, they progressively get better and better through, through as the band got to know each other and they bonded. So the Definitely. music, you know, got better as well. So, mm -hmm. Can you share some memorable moments working with Honeysuckle Rose? Let me think. Uh, <laughs> something that, it, it's funny, uh, the thing that comes to mind is the first day that we all like we started writing first we thought well we, we need to get the words and the melody and stuff down before we actually get behind the instruments but man when we went up into the rehearsal room for the first time and joey said something like i hope you brought your earplugs because i hate to hurt people's eardrums and he starts freaking playing and it, it was like john bonham in a stadium it was uh and everybody you know like it was it seemed foreign to them to not turn the amps up to 11 you know just cranking it up i it sounded good but at the same time it was we're in this small room trying to like all right hold on a second next line you know yelling over each other through microphones and trying to get it to work out but uh that was memorable mm -hmm. it, as funny as it sounds uh backstage there were some moments before we we went on that there was this this beautiful bonding that took place where everybody would be kind of somewhat at war with one another over this and that, like don't sing over my guitar solo and don't play guitar over my vocal solo, but yeah. they would kind of have it out. And then we would go backstage into the, uh, 
like there was a break room and then there was an actual shower area where when you sang it would echo so we'd go back there and we'd rehearse before they went on and it was this beautiful bonding that would take place as they were just like playing the songs together and smiling at each other and just having fun with it that that's the memories that that I will take away is is the moments when everybody came together like that that's so beautiful because ah. you take these people from the band and you're writing and recording and performing and then they're bonding and they're laughing and they're just having so much fun with what they're doing yeah yeah i agree that was great and i got to know a lot of them real well they you know i have a studio at my house and uh not just my band, but the other bands, they would come over from time to time and, and just let loose. I got to see Joey's band uh, with Rob and, and those guys, and they are just, audio Christ, just unbelievable, like how good they are. And, yeah. uh, and they would just let loose there a little bit, you know, because there's no cameras on or anything, and they could just kind of really relax. And uh, those were memorable moments, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which song that you worked on with the band is your favorite and why? Well, I have two favorites. It's tough. There's like, I, I think my favorite is the song called Shine because, you know, some, we, we may have started off all the time trying to shoot for the mark. Like they would say, oh, write a novelty song or write a power ballad. But to me, writing songs is very personal. It's like, I'd, I've always written from a uh, more of an autobiographical standpoint mm -hmm. and we would start getting ideas and and before we knew it we we would always it seems like we started writing about what's going on with us and we, then we would disregard it's like oh it's supposed to be a novelty song or it's supposed to be this and we would just roll with it because it felt right and shine was a song about what I'd said earlier about making sure everybody has their moment in the spotlight and how every, everybody needed to, to understand that no one was out to hurt the other person, that it was Chris's intention for Allie to sound good. And Allie and Chris wanted Santiago to shine. And so all that stuff, you know, is something that we needed to kind of talk out. It's like, cause there was this feeling of like, oh, they're trying to sabotage, you know, my big, day in the spotlight and but that's not what was happening and once everybody understood that those words just kind of fell out and and we were all able to shine so <laughs> awesome. driving is if i were to be asked what i thought was the most uh pop accessible song that <clears throat> that shows the best of everybody in the band i'd say is the song driving and that's a good one mm-hmm well, that's all the time that we have for this evening, Dave. But thank you so much for hanging out with us on Bandit the Encore. I'd like to thank Honeysuckle Rose and Dave Pahanish. Tune in to Bandit every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on Access TV. What did you think of this week's episode? Let me know in the comments below. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and rock on. Mm -hmm.